Good afternoon. It is 12 noon, and we welcome you to the Gateway Live Update. We come to you three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And currently, and who knows what will be happening in the future, but we're grateful to be here. Um, the Gateway Live Update is a 15-minute Bible study and prayer that we have. Um, today is, as you know, the 18th of August and August 18th it's uh the 230th day of the year and um, 135 days left till the end of the year and only 38 days of summer left so listen I, I keep saying this if you don't do something go do it now otherwise you're going to be sorry you didn't do it summer's going to be over and again a lot to pray about a lot of things going on in Afghanistan, as you see in the news, um, really the horrible leadership of the United States uh, and doing withdrawing everyone and allowing Taliban to resurrect. Taliban, who we thought was we were done with, the resurrecting. And my concern is that some of them will be coming through the southern border and celebrating. 911 here that's my concern now that might not happen that might happen i don't know all i do know is that that is a possibility and uh, so again you need to be praying uh, you know you're worried about the people being put to death in afghanistan right now because they're christians i worry about that in our country in the future i really do so be praying. God is good. This this country has done a lot for the kingdom of God. It has in the past. And still the number one supporter of missionaries and world missions. We are. But I get concerned. And I'm worried about what's going on in the whole country. I'm concerned. I am. Not saying trying to get us all freaked out, but I'm worried about the country. We're going down fast as a world power. We really are. We gave Taliban so much equipment and weapons uh, that someday we might have to fight against using our own weapons that they have, they took. Now, I know we have guys who can get stuff back. But I don't believe with the current administration we're going to do something like that. I don't. I'm sorry, and it's nothing to be offended about. It's not political. I just don't believe that we have someone in the administration that would do that. I believe the people that control the president and are ruining our country, just like they ruin Afghanistan. Anyway, let's get into the word. I mean, there's not much we could do but pray. Pray for the United States. Pray for Afghanistan. Pray for Christians all over the world. There are Christians all over the world every day who suffer and who are tortured. And uh, I encourage you to pray worldwide for your brothers and sisters who Jesus loves and died for, who God cares about as much as he cares for you. So let's pray for them. We're in Romans chapter 8, where we left off, like around verse 13 on Monday. Um, the sections introduced for verse 12, which says, So, brethren and sistren, we are not debtors to the flesh. We don't have an obligation to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Because if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Talking about the real spiritual life and the real life of the flesh. A lot of believers live in defeat. They live in the life of the flesh. And God says, listen, you can be a Christian. You go out and smoke crack right now. You can do whatever you want. You can. You're free in Christ to do whatever you want. But if you live, do certain things, you're going to die. Your body's going to die. It's going to happen. But if you consider your body dead, 
and live for the Lord, then you will be blessed. No matter what happens, you'll be blessed. Listen, no matter if we get made to, with a gun to our head, renounce Jesus, it'll be easier to say no. And it'll be easier. You'll be entered and ushered into his presence, just like our brothers and sisters around the world are persecuted and put to death for their faith. God cares again about them as much as he cares for us. We've been blessed to live in this country. We've been blessed about what this country's done for the kingdom. But listen, when I say this, and I say it's not to scare you, things are changing. There are evil forces in the wind who are doing things. Now, again, we have a lot of believers who, who aren't going to back down. But I'm talking about what our country used to be and is now as different worlds. So, you know, unless, of course, unless you're trying to be a Marxist, then you'll be happy. But anyway, Jesus says we have an obligation, and it's not to live according to the flesh. That's, that is because of the gospel. Listen, you're not saved because you got yourself together, because you're a good person, because you don't smoke or drink or chew. That isn't what saved you. What saved you is the blood of Jesus Christ. And because of that, that's what he says here, verse 12, because of that, we have an obligation. And our obligation is not to live according to the flesh. Again, verse 13, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the Son, are the children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you received the spirit of adoptions. Adoption as sons, and whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now, adoption is a good doctrine. It's a good thing. We're adopted into the family of God. Listen, I was hopeless, and God adopted me into his family. Now, I know, and maybe you know, maybe you've been burnt by Reformed theology and their teaching on adoption, which comes from truth. See, any doctrine that is kind of crazy like that always is based on truth and overemphasis of truth. Adoption is a real thing. I've really been adopted into the family of God. I am a co-heir with Christ. That's a real truth. And if you believe it's true with you too, you're a co-heir with Jesus of the whole universe. You are. You really are. And you've received that because God adopted you. And that's why I cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16 says, we're in chapter 8, verse 16 of Romans, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Inside of you, the Holy Spirit in you let, let you know, listen, I am a child of God. I really am a child of God. And... Verse 17, if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Listen, that means we go all the way with Jesus. Not just in good times, but in bad times. Not when things are going great, but when things are going horrible. I go with Jesus. You go with Jesus, no matter what happens. And listen, God might, he might allow me to, to glorify him through some crazy means like that. God might. I pray that I will be faithful and I pray that you will be faithful. I really do. That if he allows us that we be faithful, don't you want to be faithful to the Lord? And the way you start by that, doing that, by the way, is being faithful in the little things he tells us to do now. It isn't like all of a sudden you're going to be like Samson. It's that I start now by doing the things he tells me to do. I say yes. I deny my flesh. I deny my rights. And I do what Jesus says. I do what the Holy Spirit who's in me says. Because we're going to be glorified with him. Verse 18 continues. Paul says, I, I consider the sufferings of this present time. Now, 
Paul went through a lot of suffering, stoned to death, beat up, rejected. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that's to be revealed in us. Not even the same thing. Listen, even if you have a Taliban holding a gun to your head, saying, why do you have the Bible on your phone, your cell phone? You got the Bible on your cell phone, you're getting it. And they put a bullet through your head. That suffering, listen, is not worth comparing with the glory that's going to be revealed. That's what Paul said. Revealed to us, to you and me who are adopted. For verse 19, the creation, that means the whole creation out there, waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. It does. The sons of God. The technia tooth you, the kids, God's kids, you and me. It's waiting for that. Not this is, I know some people took a special teaching on this during the 1910s and again in the 1940s through 80s. But the children of God, the sons of God here are just us. The whole planet, the trees out there, listen, the sticker bushes are waiting for us to be revealed in the kingdom. They're waiting for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to come back on this planet. They're waiting. That's a good thing. Are you waiting for Jesus to come back? The whole creation is. It's what's to see? The revelation of God's kids. God's kids, the sons of God. For verse 20, their creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it. Yes, and creation fell with sin, as we talked about previously. Um, futility, it says in the ESV here, but not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that, verse 21, the creation itself would be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. When Jesus comes back, when his kids are revealed, the creation's going to be different. The creation waiting for the millennium, it's going to be totally different. It's waiting for that. We should be, you and I, should be waiting for this revelation that's going to happen. It really is going to happen. And it is an exciting thing, isn't it? It's a great thing. Hey, listen, we're so happy that creation itself is groaning and yearning for the revelation that's going to happen. And you and I should be doing that. That really should be there. Remember, there's a special blessing for those who are longing for the appearing of Jesus, 2 Timothy chapter 4. There is a special blessing for those who are doing that. I hope you'll be one. I hope you are one. Are you longing for him to come back? I am. I long for Jesus to come back. I really do. And to bring with him all that he's bringing with us. It's going to be amazing. Amazing. It really is. So let's continue to long for Jesus to come back. Let's pray now. Again, when we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as in heaven. That's what we're praying for. We're praying for that millennial reign of Christ. When he comes back, when his kids are revealed, you and I, we're revealed. And when everything will be put right the way it's supposed to be. We do. I wait for that. I really do long for that. And I know a lot of you do too. Let's not give up. So when we're praying for Afghanistan and our country and those other things, we pray his will, his will be done. It isn't what I want. It isn't what you want. Yes, we do yearn and we can ask. You can ask in Jesus' name. He gave us authority to do that. But we pray his will to be done. We're going to do that right now as we pray. We're going to pick up here on Friday afternoon at noon. So, well, right at noon, Friday at noon. And we pray now. Don't forget, tonight we're going to be two-part special messages with our own Mark Adams, who will be blessing us with a word tonight and next Wednesday night. And uh, we got a special speaker for Sunday. And 
Um, we're going to have a baptism after church on Sunday, so I hope you can be part of that. If you've never been immersed in water upon confession of faith, now's the time to do that. Sunday after church, if you're here at Gateway, you can be immersed upon confession of faith, just like they did in the New Testament. And we encourage you to do that. Um, be here tonight for the word, but we're going to pray before we're dismissed. So please hang on. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we do lift up all that's going on in this planet, Lord God. Oh, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to bring comfort and blessing to those who are in Afghanistan and Pakistan and anywhere else they're being controlled by groups of men who through evil and suspicious minds, put to death people and, and take children for their own, Lord. Please, Lord God, we ask you in Jesus' name, touch and protect our brothers and sisters in other countries and in our country, Lord. Prepare us, Lord, that we would be faithful, even unto death, for your kingdom. We thank you, Lord. We pray blessing upon each one. Lord, those who are sick, those who are suffering with COVID and everything else crazy that's going on in this world, we lift your hands. Keep us free, Father, from infirmity and touch us with your special blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, guys, thanks for joining us today. We'll be back on Friday. We'll be here tonight at 730. We hope to see you live and in person. As you bless, we thank you for all you who are um, joined us today and they're praying blessings on us we're just we're just so thankful for what god's doing and we're thankful for each one of you listen god loves you so much he really does he wants you god loves you and he wants what's best for you and he cares for you he really does so talk to him allow him to lead you and until we greet you Tonight at 7.30, we'll pray God's blessings, his best blessings for you, will come upon you and overtake you with his goodness of his love. Amen. We'll see you tonight, and we'll see you on Friday at noon. God bless.